What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel and today I've got something that's uh, very special to present you with and this is going to be my take on my experience with Arige Lador's Civet de Nuit. Now before I pull out the perfume and present it to you and share with you my experience, I just wanted to let you know that um, Arige Lador is a niche slash artisanal house. So it follows an old school sort of traditional French perfumery as well as Middle Eastern uh, perfumery style. So if you're into that, this is the video for you. Uh, they use a lot of natural ingredients and a lot of it is painstakingly sourced. And while I cannot confirm the statement that I've just said, this is just based on what I've read online, seeing other review videos and just exploring the forums and listening to people speak about uh, Russian Adam, who is the guy behind Arige Lador, and in this case, Civet de Nuit. And uh, yeah, so this is my first Arige Lador perfume. I've uh, never owned anything before. Uh, I've come across them when I first heard about Russian Musk uh, by the house. And because like all Arige Lador perfumes, it's limited edition, uh, I never managed to get my hands on a bottle uh, and I couldn't even get my hand on a sample. So I told myself that whatever next iteration that comes out, I will be sure to get my hands on it. Now, with Civet de Nuit, uh, there's a few reviews out there on YouTube, not a lot, and most of them seem to be either, um, how should I put this? They're not bad-mouthing the perfume or putting it down but they're not also um, too excited about it. And from the reviews I've seen it, there's a few reasons for that. Um, Civet de Nuit is supposed to have a blueprint of an old French civet based perfume. And uh, it seems like a lot of the perfume community, which I'm not part of, I'll emphasize that, I'm a complete noob. Uh, this is just for me uh, an olfactory experience, something to enjoy and to get my nose on something new. Uh, but it seems that it's been done before. There are variations out there that could be um, of the same quality and scent but at a cheaper price point. But whatever the case may be, I couldn't really find any reviews that were, um, I don't want to say promotional but th that would incentivize me to buy it. Nonetheless, uh, just because of the reputation of the house, I just wanted to get my hand on one of uh, Russian Adam's creations. And initially I was gonna go for the uh, smaller bottle, uh, but they sold out the first time and I've waited a bit too long on the second time. So I ended up buying the uh, full, I believe it's 38 mil. 38 mil uh, bottle and uh, my initial response is wow I actually was surprised by how much I like it I was a bit worried just because of the lack of a lot of excited the lack of excited reviews online about it but then again, I've never had any civet based perfumes. Uh, I do have a sampler of Zoologist Civet. And honestly, depending on the day, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Uh, just because it has synthetic civet in it, which can have a pissy note to it. Which, I mean, I'll be honest again, it, it really depends on the day and on my mood. Some days I can tolerate it, others I can't. So for me, I was a bit concerned with this one, but I also wanted a natural civet perfume and an Arige Lador. So the timing happened to be perfect and I pulled the trigger on it 
after procrastinating so many times because I wanted someone <laughs> online to tell me, hey, this is an awesome perfume, go and buy it, you won't regret it. Uh, so this was a blind buy. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, box and the perfume and uh, kind of walk you through the notes and my experience with it. Again, I don't have a trained nose. I'm not an experienced uh, perfume connoisseur. This is all new to me. And uh, for me, this is a very luxurious and opulent perfume. And I'm just gonna share with you my experience with it and uh, why I do enjoy it. Uh, so let me first grab a sip of coffee. Cause I need coffee for these videos, guys. I, I work day, all day and I try to hit the gym if I can. And by the time I shoot these videos, I'm just completely uh, worn out. So I need the pick me up. All right, so here is the box that you get from uh, Arise the Door. And when you do open it, you will see the Civet de Nuit notes right there. And then this is the uh, perfume bottle and the cap. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the perfume, the color of the juice, if I can get the camera to. The color of the juice on this is just insane. And the design of the bottle is gorgeous. The sprayer is really good too. Um, and you see a signature, I believe, of Russian Adam at the bottom. Um, and you've got Arige Lador at the top here. Uh, but this is what it looks like. And then here's the cap with some Arabic on top of it. And it's a very tight fitting, very nice bottle. I, I have a lot of appreciation for the craftsmanship behind the design of the bottle. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fantastic in terms of presentation. Now, with respect to, I'm gonna focus you guys again. With respect to the notes, uh, so actually, by the way, so Civet de Nuit is 48 mils, not 38, like I've mentioned earlier. And this is done by Russian Sultan and Adam Pasha. Well, actually, I think they mixed the name. I think what it's Russian Adam and Sultan Pasha, okay? And they're both perfumers uh, that use uh, natural oil-based ingredients. <laughs> so again, it, using my limited language here on perfumery. Um, so with respect to the top notes, we have Heliotrope, Acord, and Aldehyde. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what Heliotrope smells like. I smelled aldehydes before, and I've never been really a fan of them, um, but in this perfume, you barely pick on them. Like, I can smell them in there, but they're not off-putting or obnoxious, uh, like in some of the pure aldehydic perfumes. So I really like, like how the aldehyde is done here. Uh, the heart notes are antiquated civet tincture, night blooming jasmine, and ylang ylang. Now, I'm not really sure what's with the antiquated language, but I do know having watched the Russian Adam video on, uh, prior to the Civet de Nuit release is that uh, the civet in here is approximately 50 years old uh, from a perfumery that went out of business. That's where they got it from. Um, so maybe that's what they mean by antiquated, or maybe they just mean it's the, the, the way they have prepared it is out of fashion. Uh, no idea what the intention behind the language here is, but um, there is a pretty old civet in here. And my understanding is that um, the longer you age civet, the less of a pissy quality it has to the scent, and it tends to be more on the creamier side, which is the effect you're really going for. Uh, generally speaking, and I think in uh, Russian Adam's video, he was talking about how he was trying to get this creamy, buttery uh, feel of civet in the perfume uh, to simulate uh, skin scent. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not sure what that is like uh, in terms of skin scent. Do they mean sweat 
or do they just mean there's a particular smell to skin? Because frankly, my skin doesn't really have a smell to it. So again, uh, I'm limited in my knowledge here, so I, I can't quite express um, what they mean by that, nor do I have the sort of reference point. And, and frankly, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, okay, moving on, uh, the Night Blooming Jasmine and Ylang Ylang. Again, I've never smelled either of these before on their own, so I can't really comment on that. I did look them up uh, just to get an idea of what they look like uh, in terms of florals wise. Uh, but again, not really sure what each one uh, smells like individually. So another sip of coffee. And last but not least is the base notes. Uh, so there's oak moss, benzoin, olibanum, tobacco, white ambergris, castorium, sandalwood misur, styrex, labdanum, and musk accord. Uh, so there's quite a bit in here in terms of, again, um, animalic uh, notes. So castorium and styrex, as well as the ambergris, are animalic. And uh, oh, there's also the musk uh, A chord. So there's four extra notes of uh, animatic touches in there. And then you have quite a bit of resins, I believe, like benzoin, olibanum, labdanum. Uh, then there's the tobacco, and then there's the oak moss, which will give a bit of a musty, uh, greenish uh, touch. So this is the 2021 formulation. Um, and I'm gonna say formulation because if he does produce another one later on in the future, uh, it may smell like this or it may not, uh, just because um, uh, when you do use uh, natural ingredients, depending on the production year, as well as just uh, storage, processing, uh, it can produce a different scent. So this is why with a lot of natural perfumes, uh, you tend to have slight variations from one batch to the other. So in terms of what I think, uh, or what my experience with this perfume is, um, I'm just gonna share that. I just need a moment here to smell it. So first of all, and that's a very interesting uh, thing for me, is that uh, right on the sprayer, uh, you see like a yellowish, oilish sort of uh, residue from the spray uh, and this is uh, to the best of my knowledge and understanding is a quality of civet based uh, perfumes they tend to stain the sprayer like that uh, when you do have uh, a significant concentration of natural civet Be honest with you, I, I, it's it's a bit challenging to describe this. I do pick on the tobacco for sure. Okay, you know what? Let's spray it. I'm gonna put some on anyways because I'm gonna put it in my sort of uh, collarbone area. Now, this doesn't have alcohol in it, to the best of my knowledge, but it's a good practice. I used to put perfume around my neck. But then because a lot of the perfumes I have are um, have an alcohol carrier and alcohol is a skin stringent, you don't want to ruin your skin. But if you put it here towards the sort of gap between your collarbone and neck, it basically, you can still smell it. Uh, it's an unexposed skin area. So even if it gets sort of ruined over time, you don't have to worry about that. But also kind of uh, uh, whiffs upwards when it does radiate from your body heat. Anyways, here we go. put some here also okay wow so first of all I've tried this in the morning and I've tried it in the evening and I'm not really sure what is it some perfumes uh, do smell better at night compared to the morning and I'm not sure why this is one that I would say smells better in the evening than the morning now, I'm not sure if it's because of I don't know, some of the ingredients just come to life in the evening, I guess. Uh, but 
Okay, so I'm just gonna put this back in and start giving you my input on this. So first of all, it's fantastic. I mean, I love, love, love this scent. I, I, again, as I mentioned, I was worried about it having a pissy quality, zero pissy quality. Now my skin ate it up very quick, uh, which would mean I probably need more sprays, but uh, on the spray, I got a bit of the Jasmine. Uh, that is very obvious as soon as I sprayed. Uh, and it's like, uh, growing up, I grew up uh, for some time in the Mediterranean and uh, at night, uh, there's a lot of jasmine trees uh, around the Mediterranean and at night is when they smell their best. And this reminds me of that jasmine. When we used to go out at night after, after spending a day at the beach, it reminds me of that jasmine, like heavy jasmine whiff floating through the air it is very pleasant you get a nice mediterranean uh, breathe of air and it carried in that is jasmine and this this reminds me a lot of it um, i'm also getting a bit of that ambergris touch which is a bit of this uh, salty freshness kind of like ocean breathe so I definitely get that in here and uh, I do like that a lot. There's a bit of freshness to it. Now, there's a bit of mustiness also in there and it's not a bad kind of mustiness where like you're smelling um, fungus or, um, or just like uh, rotting wood. It's, it's a pleasant sort of mustiness and it's not like an old musty place smell either it's kind of a, like an aged musty in a good way it's like if you're opening a nice bottle of scotch or a, a nice bottle of wine um, that is a bit on the older side uh, and there's some mustiness to it this is kind of like this so it's a pleasant mustiness it's not a bad kind of mustiness It is a bit creamy, kind of like if you're applying lotion, I get a bit of that in here, like a, a soapy slash lotion-y kind of touch to it. Let's see if I can smell. I like this. The problem is my skin eats it so fast though. Okay. So you can get a bit of that civet. It's not very obvious, it's in the back scenes, but you get a bit of that animalic touch. And remember, there's also Styrax, Castorium in there too. So you're definitely gonna get some of that um, animalic feel in there, but it's done most of it in the middle and base notes. So they're not the stars, they're, they're just in supporting roles. So they're not overwhelming in that sense. Yeah, but let's see uh, what else is there in terms of notes that I can maybe. So again, I don't know. I've heard that Heliotrope gives a bit of a powdery uh, feel. I can see that there is a bit of powder in here, but it's not overwhelming powder. I, I don't think it is because I've, I have powdery perfumes, like uh, iris perfumes tend to uh, have a powdery feel to them and not all per perfumes are pleasant that way. So for example, I have Dior Almond Tons, which is an iris based perfume and it does have a powdery touch, which is strong, but it's not unpleasant. It's actually very enjoyable in that perfume. So I get a bit of that here, but it's not overwhelming, nor is it badly done. It's actually really good. It just complements the perfume, so I think it's it's good in that sense. I can't quite pick on aldehydes because aldehydes for me tend to smell very metallic and synthetic. 
and I'm not getting that here. The civet I can pick on, uh, the night blooming jasmine, I, I'm assuming that's the same as normal jasmine, even though I looked it up, I still couldn't quite tell, but you can get jasmine, that uh, a bit of an indolic jasmine in here. Ylang Ylang, again, not sure what that would smell like. Oak moss, I do get that, that's probably part of where the mustiness is coming from. Uh, benzoin, olibanum, benzoin and olibanum, so it is a bit resinous, uh, so I definitely do get that. I can't tell the difference between both, however, but you do get a bit of that resiny touch in here. Tobacco, I can get that. Uh, white ambergris, you get that salty, fresh ocean kind of touch. Castorium and Styrax, they're both there, uh, but again, I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between both, to be honest, but there is an animalic touch in there for sure. Then the uh, sandalwood misur. So I've smelt synthetic sandal, which is santal, is, is what it's typically known as, but natural I've never had. So again, I wouldn't be quite able to put my nose on this. Uh, there's the labdanum, which again is a resin in there. And then there's the musk uh, acorn and uh, I mean, again, it's going to be part of that animalic undertone. Uh, so with respect to that, there's definitely an animalic note in there. Now, uh, in terms of... Yeah, this is like... I can get... So see, that's the interesting thing. So now I'm picking a bit on the aldehydes where I've uh, smelted on the skin next to my neck. So, yeah, I mean, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous smell. I really do like it quite a lot. In terms of uh, silage and projection, for me, I don't think I'm going to have silage with this just because it's a very close, uh, close to skin scent. So projection, I'd say somebody needs to be really close to you to smell it. In terms of how long it will last, I found out that uh, it does last quite a bit on my skin uh, for a few hours at least. I'd, I'd say four hours I can smell it on my skin. Um, but then again, my skin is very sort of uh, difficult when it comes to scents in the sense that it eats up uh, scents easily and oil-based scents uh, don't last that very long, which is why typically in the past I've uh, opted for alcohol-based scents. Uh, because they tend to last longer on my skin but this is gorgeous i really like it now i will caution though that this is not on the um freshy young side uh, i would say that this is a kind of smell if you're a mature gentleman or lady uh, you would have an appreciation for this uh, definitely also if you've had your nose around quite a bit of uh, olfactory notes uh, this is going to be very interesting for you uh, but if you're a newbie, it might be a bit challenging or difficult. And, and this is just coming from personal experience. When I first started getting into natural ingredients, uh, they were very challenging to deal with because you're used to the synthetic uh, mass market uh, perfumes like Armani and Dior, which there's nothing wrong with. I enjoy them a lot. Uh, but um, these uh, are not as common uh, these artisanal uh, and niche perfume notes are not as common as the synthetic stuff that's mass produced. Uh, so if you're not accustomed to it or you didn't get your nose on it, it does take some time. It is a bit of an acquired taste, I will say. But once you get into it, man, this is, this is gorgeous. See, here's the interesting thing. You can pick on the civet, but it has also this very soapy, clean... I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's like... It's a clean scent. I mean, you can get the mustiness, a bit of civet, but it's also clean. It's such a, it's such a weird scent. It, it's enjoyable because it's like, it gets you thinking. It, it, if I had to explain it, it's a thinking man's or woman's scent. Like if you like to think through the notes, if you're a perfume for your own appreciation, not just for attention and compliments, because I'm not too sure how many compliments you get with this. It isn't your typical mainstream compliment getter. But if you're wearing it for your own pleasure, uh, for your own, for the lack of a better way of putting, 
hedonism, like just your own sensual pleasure. I recommend this scent. Um, and again, please, 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 if you can get a sample, get a sample. Uh, just try it first on your own. Uh, I blind bought it, uh, to be honest. I just wanted an Aries Lador uh, perfume in my collection. But you know what? No regrets. This is like, uh, it's really interesting. And, and I was a bit cautious too from people that, um, you know, gave uh, opinions about it that seemed to be flat and either positive nor negative, just neutral. Uh, it got me thinking a lot before I wanted to dish out 400 US dollars. But it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, uh, it's a lovely, lovely scent. And uh, I, 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 I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't wear this for anyone else's enjoyment or pleasure, just for mine. Um, and, and I'll say, I've, I've sprayed it in the morning and I sprayed it in the evening. I'll be honest, evening, like early evening to late evening, I find it smells better. Again, I'm not sure why, but it is a gorgeous scent. Um, if you like civet uh, as a note and have an appreciation for an old style French perfumery, I'd recommend going for this. And I mean, just to give you an idea, uh, there's a perfume close to this uh, that supposedly uh, compares to this, but tends to have more of a pissy civet note, which was Michael Jackson's um, signature scent. So, I mean, and even I think one of the queens of England uh, used to love putting on civet based perfume. So, if that tells you anything, is that it's a perfume for royalty. Uh, for complex people, for creative people, uh, for people of high status, high society that can appreciate something that's this refined. Um, and yeah, I would, I mean, I wouldn't wear this to an office, but if I'm out to, and I wouldn't wear it to a club either, but if you're out to a posh event uh, where you wanna uh, convey complexity, maturity, and a sense of refinement, this is the scent for you. And if you're not going out, even if you just want to put a perfume before going to bed at night, I would put this. This is like a, a bedtime perfume for me too. I would love to put this going to bed. Uh, I'd imagine part, like it, it has, it's very calming. It's not like in your face. It doesn't stress you out like some sense when you first spray it. Uh, I, I, I do have some allergies and this has not triggered my allergies at all. So compared to some of the synthetic stuff out there. So I really appreciate this. And it's one of the reasons why I've started getting back into natural perfumery. But this is, this is gorgeous. And, and it's very calming. That's the thing. I, I, and I, I'm going to assume it's the sandal monsieur because I know it has calming qualities in it. But it feels just... I'm starting to get what they mean by a skin scent. It's just, it feels like it's warm, familiar, intimate. Mm, I mean, it's stunning, it's stunning. You can't go wrong with this if you're, uh, if you want a refined civet based uh, perfume minus the uh, overly pissy note, which I'll be honest with you, the first time I sprayed a synthetic civet note, that pissy note just made me go and wash it off. And then over time, I started developing an appreciation for it. And then something really interesting happened is that I couldn't smell the pissy note anymore. <laughs> so again, it's one of those things that is an acquired taste, kind of like a, a peaty scotch or a blue cheese or a, a 120 day aged steak. It's one of those things when you first try it, you're like, mm, I'm not too sure about this. But as time goes by, you develop an appreciation for it and an understanding of why it's... Okay, so my camera just uh, stopped recording. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it up here. And uh, if you saw this and you enjoyed it and you thought it was uh, valuable or helpful to you in terms of input on uh, Civit de Nuit, Please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate your thoughts and input, especially if you have a bottle or a sample. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm really curious uh, about learning about other people's experiences, especially when it comes to a perfume like this. And I'm also uh, just would like to learn more about niche artisanal uh, perfumes, 
Uh, so these are my thoughts on Arige Lador Civet de Nuit. Uh, based on my own experiences, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous scent, really loved it. Uh, I would recommend it uh, for the right person that would be able to appreciate a scent like this. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for my review. Um, thank you for watching <laughs> and uh, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.